Jira is a very powerful software. The first step you should do when you're new to Jira and you know very little about it is you should create an issue. I know that normally creating an issue means that someone has a task that he should be doing, but we are going to um, ignore all of this. And what uh, the first thing for a collaborative software like Jira is that you start knowing how to use it. And there is no pain or no damage you, that you can do by just creating an issue. So we're just going to go ahead and you can do the same thing in your instance and no one would scold you, I promise you. And if not, put something in a comment and tell me uh, someone tried to stab me after I created a test issue. It's not going to happen. So um, what do you click uh, search for? You log into your Jira and there's this big button create issue. If you don't see it, you have a very old uh, instance of Jira and most of the videos that I create um, uh, may be kind of way off because your software still works differently. But since a couple of versions, there is this big create issue button up here and you want to click it. And then what you can do is you can choose a project. And as I was in a project already, this field is pre-populated. I can open the drop down and I think we have like 300 projects in here. And uh, the recent projects that I used are offered here. I'm going to use this test project USA um, for this. And then there's issue types that I can use. Actually, this test project only has two issue types, new feature and task. So this should be a task. And this is the first question that people has is, uh, which issue type should I take? It's a, it's a task. I don't know whether it's a task or a feature or whatever. But let me tell or show you how complex this could be. Um, this project is not very well configured, so I have a lot of issue types here. Do you see this list? Like, and for every single issue type, a certain workflow could be assigned. So, actually, the the thing, the issue that I'm create may be handled differently from the system. So, this complexity is not available here, and this can change. Um, no matter which project you're in and you can create an issue in, um, you just go ahead and choose any issue type here. It doesn't matter for us now. Um, what you always have to do is you have to provide a summary, which is um, a, a set, a summary of what should be done. Um, basically, every issue that you create in Jira is some sort of a task some sort of change that you want to see in a certain piece of software, in your company, in your organization, institution, whatever should change, it could be an issue. And actually, what I try to do with all these videos that we create for you to help you use Jira is, I want your company to get to a state through you and your colleagues slowly where Every single task will be a Jira issue one day. And there is a limit to that, which could be something, everything under 30 minutes or under 60 minutes. Some people say two or four hours. I think that's too big, but everything under 30 minutes may not need to be a Jira task. But everything over 60 minutes should be a Jira task, at least for the small team that you're start trying out Jira. Um, but at this point, we'll just offer a summary, which is try to find out how this silly Jira works. We need to test and try and test and try, which is basically what I am convinced is the best way to get going and become a Jira Pro. Um, so this summary and this description you'll always see in almost all projects. Everything else like components or priority, this is now a filing ticket, um, and a customer that you could use, a due date, a resolution notice, um, the option to upload a file, 
uh, a start date, an end date, an estimation, all these fields, they are not mandatory for creation of an issue. So basically what you need is the summary. And that's why um, this has an asterisk here. And actually you need always need a project and an issue type because the project tells you where this task belongs to or this issue belongs to. And the issue type is relevant for workflows, for permissions and all this stuff. Um, actually, as I said, we, we don't care about that for now. You just try to choose what, what, whatever may be, may be best. So as you, we have a summary right now, we can click create. There's this option to create another if you want to do one issue after the other, but we don't do that now. So basically what we do is create. And then there's this message here that tells us that the first issue in our test project has been created, test USA. If you are in a existing environment and you've just chosen any project, it may be test USA 1400 and so on, so on so. Um, so these will just incrementally increase test USA 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Um, this is the uh, called issue key, and it will help you to identify, identify the issues later. Um, yeah, basically, um, this is the detailed um, screen um, of the issue. And what you can do here is very specific to your rights as a user. Sometimes you only can create it, you cannot assign it. So if you hover over this um, uh, element here, you can change it as I uh, can. You may be able or may not be able to say start progress and done and all of this stuff. Um, uh, so uh, we are not gonna cover this because it's more of uh, project administration. At this point, normally everything that you can change will be you will be able to change that on this page. I'm not able to change this here, so I don't have the rights. Um, let's find out in another video how to configure that with roles. But for now, this is how to create an issue. You click on the Create Issue button. You test one, two, three. Offer a summary. You choose a project and a task, which I did before, so it's pre-populated here. And then you hit create. And if you don't have someone, something else, you can click this. Then the next, here's the issue that gets created. And I have the next thing. So test, test, test. And I hit create again. And then test use A3 is created. Pretty simple.